Welcome to Brilliant Biology. Today we're diving into topic 5A3, the biochemistry of photosynthesis. This video will be divided into two parts, and this is part one. This topic can be a bit overwhelming, especially because the book explanation is slightly unclear in my opinion, but we'll go through everything step by step and you'll realize it's a lot easier than it looks. So by the end of this video, you should understand the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis and the light independent reactions of photosynthesis. Let's begin with an overview. Photosynthesis can be split into two stages, the light dependent reactions, which require light to occur, and the light independent reactions, which can occur both in the presence and absence of light. Don't get confused by thinking that light independent reactions only occur in the dark. You also have to remember that the products from the light dependent reactions are used in the light independent reactions. Let's begin by having an overview of the light dependent reactions. These reactions occur in the thylakoid and in the lamellae. These reactions use water and release oxygen as a waste product. They produce ATP and NADPH, which are then used in the light independent reactions. And they can also be split into two stages, cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. We will start by looking at cyclic photophosphorylation. This stage involves only photosystem 1. Remember that photosystem 1 is a combination of pigments that absorb light with wavelengths 700 nanometers. And this stage only produces ATP, but we'll go through it step by step. The first step is that a photon of light hits the chlorophyll molecule, which causes an electron in the chlorophyll molecule to be excited to a higher energy state. The electron is then captured by an electron carrier in the electron transport chain. It is passed along the electron transport chain in a series of redox reactions, releasing energy that is used to produce ATP. When we talked about the electron transport chain, in the importance of ATP, we mentioned that it is found in the mitochondria, but in plants it can also be found in the lamellae of the chloroplast, which is where the stage takes place. Now the energy that is released, as we said, is used to produce ATP in a phosphorylation reaction, so adenosine diphosphate combines with a free phosphate group to make ATP. The last step is that an electron from photosystem 2 is fed back into the original chlorophyll molecule, where it can be excited again. And this completes the cycle. Now let's move on to non-cyclic photophosphorylation. This stage involves both photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Photosystem 2 is also a combination of pigments, but it absorbs light with wavelengths 680 nanometers. This stage also produces both ATP and NADPH. Let's outline what happens step by step. So first, water undergoes a photolysis reaction in which it breaks down as shown into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions react to form oxygen, which is released as a waste product, and water. This also releases electrons. Now remember the chlorophyll molecule from photosystem 2, which gave up its electron to the chlorophyll molecule from photosystem 1. It has an electron hole now, which basically means it's missing an electron. You could also say that it's oxidized. This electron hole is filled with an electron which is released from the photolysis of water. Lastly, the electrons from photosystem 1 continue to be excited. This time, however, they're caught by a specific electron carrier called NADP, which also collects one hydrogen ion from the disassociation of water. NADP uses the electron and the hydrogen ion to become NADPH. Finally, let's look at the light independent reactions. These reactions can happen both with and without light. They occur in the stroma. They use ATP and NADPH from the light dependent reactions. They use carbon dioxide and they're often referred to as the Calvin cycle. So let's analyze the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle can be split into three stages. 
The first stage is known as carbon fixation. In this stage, a compound called RUBP, which has five carbons, combines with CO2 from the environment, and they react together with the help of an enzyme called Rubisco to make two compounds of GP, which have three carbons each. The next stage is known as reduction. In this stage, ATP is used to provide energy, releasing back ADP and a free phosphate group, and NADPH is used to provide a hydrogen ion, releasing back NADP. Energy and the hydrogen ion are used to turn the two GP compounds into two compounds of GALP, which also each contain three carbons. Now, some of GALP goes on to become glucose, but much of it continues into the next stage, which is known as regeneration. In this stage, GALP undergoes a series of reactions and turns back into the original RUBP compound. This way, the reaction can happen over and over again. And that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I've made a link in the description box with flashcards which you can use to practice this topic and they're completely free. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.